everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top five tips on how to prepare an art portfolio. So this is applicable for anyone who's applying for a university course in art, textiles, product design, or if like myself, you're applying to study architecture. Hopefully these tips should give you some ideas on how to prepare your portfolio. I will take you through my portfolio to show you the kind of work that you could put into a portfolio. However, every portfolio is completely unique and making sure that you represent your own artistic style is the most important aspect of your portfolio. So, on to the tips. So you've probably all heard this tip before, but it's to start and end with your strongest two pieces. This is true because it really conveys to the admissions officer what kind of artist and creator you are. It's these two first and last pages that leave the greatest impression on them. So if you have done an A-level like art or any creative subject, I would strongly recommend that you use one of your final pieces or one of those that you've got graded highest on for these two pieces. So you can leave a great impression with the admissions officer. Tip number two is to do with the layout and composition of your work. It's likely that if you have to submit a digital portfolio, there will be a limit in the amount of pages that you are allowed to submit to the university. I recommend that you lay out your pages by theme so that each different page explores a different theme. Within your portfolio, you can show to the assessor that you're capable of working across a wide range of subject matters. For example, if you were going to create a page on the human body, I would recommend that um, you use your favourite media to create one large piece on this page and then create a few supporting images around the outside, zooming into details such as eyes, ears or looking at the figure from a new angle. In these smaller images, you will be able to use a range of different medias as it's really important within your portfolio to have not only balance between your pages, but enough variety within them so that the person looking at them doesn't get bored straight away. Tip number three can be viewed slightly differently depending on whether you're presenting your portfolio in person or whether it's a digital submission. It's all about creating a story and a narrative as the person looks through your portfolio. In a digital portfolio, you'll be able to achieve this by putting small captions and little paragraphs about your key pieces of work, explaining the reasoning behind them and your thought process as you created them. If you have an interview, it's worth thinking about ahead of time how you are going to convey your thought process, sharing your story as you were thinking about these pieces of artwork. Tip number four is to include supporting sketches and developmental work within your portfolio. Whilst it's understandable that the assessor doesn't want to see hundreds of pages of beginning sketches that you've created, they need to get an appreciation for your developmental process as you work through a piece of artwork and the message in which you are trying to convey behind it. Therefore, a series of small sketches is often more powerful than a final image to really show how you are thinking when you are creating this piece. Tip number five is to really be expressive and make your portfolio be a reflection of your personality and artistic style. If you love textiles and embroidery, go ahead and put an example of that in your portfolio. It's really just playing with your strengths to create the strongest portfolio that you can. And do push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Use a range of these different techniques together to create a combination and maybe a collage piece that will really impress the assessor. And my final tip is a bit of a bonus one for those of you looking to study architecture. I'm sure many of you are debating whether or not to include buildings within your portfolio. As you'll see shortly, I did decide to include a few buildings within mine. However, this is definitely not necessary at all. If you do, please focus more on the development side behind them. For example, including some models that you've created, a sketch plan, rather than just putting in 10 paintings of your favourite buildings. So now I'm going to show you my portfolio that got me offers at various universities, including my final choice that was the University of Nottingham. So I started off my portfolio with a big statement piece in which I looked at the form of the Taj Mahal. 
However, to make this piece a bit more experimental and expressive, I used the colours of the Indian national flag to splatter within the dome structure to show how the Taj Mahal was a representation of Indian national identity. I also included a few examples of developmental work that I did revolving around the background of this piece. Here I experimented with different splatter techniques using varnishes and using tissue paper to create various backgrounds. The next piece was a mixed media project in which I explored different animals and the habitats in which they live. My next spread includes five images exploring the human form. Here there are three images that I created using three different medias to explore the figure. And then I zoomed in on the lips and eye detail to create a more detailed study. After that page where I developed my portraiture skills, I put an oil painting of a transcription by Rembrandt and also a eyeliner transcription. The next piece was created specifically for my application to Sheffield University. However, I decided to include it in all of my portfolios as it was an interesting way of expressing the identity of my village and the buildings around it. In this spread here, I included examples from my Arkwright project. I went through the whole building's design project from plan through to making models and finally putting my rendered images. This spread here shows examples of the work that I completed at an architectural course in London. I am particularly passionate about environmental design, therefore I thought a project of this nature would be very suitable to include within my portfolio. Within these final two spreads, I draw upon the idea of Tower Bridge and the skyline of London. By using a range of media to paint and draw similar building types, I really express and develop my ideas before putting an example of my final piece for GCSE art that was Tower Bridge. Now I'm showing you a flick through of my sketchbook that I showed to my university interview and I also included extracts of this within my online portfolio submissions. I tried to include a range of different media types as well as focusing on a variety of different subject matters. However, towards the end of the sketchbook, I looked more at buildings as this is what I was going to be assessed on as part of one of my interviews. I really hope that this video has been helpful to you and given an insight into various ways in which you could prepare your architectural or design portfolio, as these tips are very applicable for all design courses. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do watch my other video in which I give my top 10 tips for prospective architecture students and freshers about how to prepare for their first year of studies. And please remember to like this video and comment down below if you're preparing a portfolio for an art related course. And do please subscribe to keep up to date with more Kent. And please do subscribe to keep up to date with more exciting content from me. Bye bye.